Today I'm going to do something that you probably will never need to do during your entire life, but I'm going to cut a multiple thread. Now a multiple thread uh, has several different names and I'm going to explain what it is here in just a second, but sometimes it's called a multiple lead thread or if there's two threads it's called a it might be called a two start or a two lead thread or a double thread or a double start and of course there would be triple start and quadruple start and so on uh, I clear up to a number uh, probably 10 start which be, would be kind of rare but uh, they do make them This is a double thread. It came out of a gate valve, but it looks like a regular thread. So at first glance, often you cannot tell if you have a, a multiple thread, unless you know what you're looking for. But if you look at them from this end, you'll see that we got two threads. One starts here, and one starts here. But let me explain the difference between pitch and lead before I go on. Most everybody knows what the pitch is, and in this case it's a 12 pitch, which means that there are 12 threads and an inch. That's the pitch. Now the lead in a single thread would be the same as the pitch. It would also be uh, 12. But if we have a double thread like this, or a double start, the lead is going to be twice the uh, pitch. To further illustrate the difference between uh, pitch and lead, I prepared a little demonstration and we're interested in a pitch of 12. Now there is no such thing as a 5 8 12, so I'm using a 9 16 12 tap with the nut. I've set it up in a vise so the nut is fixed. Got a magnetic base indicator on the other end here. Painted uh, this flat surface white. I'm going to go one revolution. Now a 9 16 12 single thread has a pitch of 1 12th or 83 thousandths if you take it to a decimal and the lead is the same because it's a single thread so the lead is also 1 12th or 83 thousandths. Now I'm going to rotate the tap one revolution indicator is on zero and it should come out to 83. And there I am, one revolution, and it's 83 thousandths, more or less. Now let's take a look at the lead on a double thread. This setup is uh, to show you what a double lead, or a double thread, or a double pitch thread does in one revolution of turn. It's a 5 8 12 double lead, which means the pitch is again 1 12th or 83 thousandths, but the lead is double that, or 1 6th, or 0.166. So I will rotate the uh, thread one revolution and watch the indicator, and it should come out to 166, or twice of what the previous one uh, showed. See how rapidly it advances? There's 100, and we come around to a full revolution, and we're 166 more or less. I hope this helps you to understand uh, the difference between pitch and lead. Again here, we have a 12 pitch, which is 1 12th of an inch between the crest of each thread, but since this is a double thread, we have a, a double lead, or it's going to move one-sixth of an inch for each turn. Can you see how quickly, or how fast, the screw is traveling? Twice what it would be for a regular thread. Now let's look at some other examples of uh, multiple threads. You'll see multiple threads on uh, many, many containers, and the twist-off type cap, where well, you don't need a, a bottle opener, uh, is quite often a four-start, see, and I blackened it, one, two, three, and four, so that it doesn't take much to get it off, just a, a little bit of a turn, and it comes off. Here's an orange juice bottle. It also is a four 
start thread. I put a little bit of white on there. Now when you take the cap, notice that it only takes a little bit to tighten it that much of a turn, about one-fourth of a turn. Also there's much less chance of uh, cross-threading uh, an item that has uh, multiple threads. Virtually all one gallon milk jugs also are multiple thread. This is a four. And not that you're going to look at it, but have you ever noticed most pens, when you take them apart, it doesn't take much to get them apart because it's a multiple thread. This is too small for me to see. I don't know how many starts it is. Maybe it's to make it easier on the girls in the factory. They don't, they don't get carpal tunnel because they just go that much and they got to close rather than cranking it. I'm saying that in just, of course. High quality woodworking vices. This is a Colombian and I've got it upside down. They were made really in uh, two different uh, ways. One is some of them have a rapid nut that allows you to move the jaw out real quickly. I think you probably all used one. But this is an older vise here and it has a two start thread so that you can move the uh, the movable jaw much faster if you have to open it way up for a big piece of wood. Now what I've done here is I put some uh, paint on uh, thread number one. If you look down here, see if I can zoom in on that. There's two threads really running side by side and there's the start of the one and on the other side here is the start of the other one. This is worn pretty badly here, so it's kind of hard to tell where it starts. But I followed the one around, and you can see what I'm talking about. So when we cut these threads, we actually are cutting two threads. First one, and then the other one in between the thread that's already there. Multiple threads are never used on fasteners because they do not have quite the strength, and they are not as deep. They're only half as deep, so I suppose there's the possibility of, uh, of stripping them. But the purpose usually is to transmit motion. And they're used on a, on a wide variety of things in industry and a few things around home. Some of these uh, lazy boy chairs that are made for handicapped people that uh, are electrically operated use uh, multiple start uh, threads. And they're used in uh, uh, all kinds of automation machinery in uh, industry but never as fasteners. And the big advantage again is use, we have more travel in one turn than with a single thread. I think everybody knows what a gate valve is, but here's a big old one inch uh, gate valve that I took apart and uh, it has a multiple thread and a double thread and that's what I'm using as the model for this demonstration, but a gate valve has a, as opposed to a globe valve has a full opening so when you open the valve you have 100 percent on a flow and no restriction as compared to cheaper globe valves and these are usually used in the main shutoff in a, a house's a, a water system and there's the gate notice that it's also tapered and the seat is tapered that's why they cost so much it's all brass but I took this apart, and uh, this comes right apart. That, of course, went on there, but I sawed it off. And this is the nut that I'm going to use, because you need a nut, and you're not going to be able to find a two-start thread or a three-start thread at a hardware store. You've got to make them, and that could be made with a, a special tap which I do not have, or in the larger sizes you're going to be able to make them by uh, internal threading, but it's, it's a job that is not for the faint of heart. But this is my thread, uh, my, ex my uh, OD thread. I'm not going to use that, but I am going to use the nut. And what I'm going to make is stubby little thread just like that. That's one I already made, and it will fit into this uh, nut. 5 eighths diameter. 
in my quest for looking for multiple uh, start threads, I ran into another gate valve that I took apart. This was in my scrap uh, barrel of brass. And there's the gate. But what's interesting about this one is it's an Acme thread and it's also a, a pitch of uh, 12 threads per inch. Double start but it's a left hand thread on top of it so you talk about a an odd thread. See it's left hand. But I found that interesting and the purpose of that on these valves is you, you don't want to have to crank them in uh, 55 turns to close the gate when the kitchen sink is uh, flooding all over the uh, the floor. You want to get down there and turn it off fast so with a, a double thread uh, it only takes half the number of turns to close the valve. I hope this isn't too confusing but as we get to the lathe you're going to see uh, where we're using this information here. But the pitch again is is 12 12 threads per inch, which is one twelfth of an inch from one crest to the next, and that equals 83 thousandths. Now the lead is a, a half of this, or a six, so it's the lead is one sixth of an inch, which is 166 thousandths, and half of the lead is 83 thousandths, and uh, remember we're going, to, we're going to be cutting uh, two threads side by side so the first one will be cut and then we're going to move over 83 thousandths and cut the second one so that's what that 83 is for. I need to know how deep to cut the thread in other words how far the tool is to advance into the thread so I looked it up in the machinery's handbook or you can use a little guidebook like this, but you need to find the depth of the thread, and it's not going to give you the depth for the uh, a, a double thread like this, but it's going to give the the depth of a uh, five eighths twelve. That's a national special, and the depth is a hundred and eight thousandths. However, for the two start thread, the depth will be half of that, which is fifty four thousandths. That is the total depth of the thread, 54 thousandths. Write those dimensions down and have them handy on your lathe when you're actually machining. If you ever cut one of these, you will need to practice. Now this is my 12 inch closing lathe and that's what I'm going to use. And I have set the quick change gearbox uh, to the, uh, the lead which is six threads per inch. So we're already set for six. Now that causes the carriage to advance very rapidly. If you have never cut a thread before, this is not the place to start uh, thread cutting. You need to go back and look at some of my earlier videos and get the basics of threading because I'm not going to cover all of that. I'm just going to assume that you know most of that. The machine is of course set at slow speed, back gears. The compound is set at uh, 90 degrees and you'll see why in just a moment. And I'm using the Aloris tool post with uh, a pre-ground uh, threading tool. The pitch and the lead are even numbers so I can catch the uh, thread chasing dial on any number or any line. Now if you're an odd uh, number of threads you're going to need to uh, catch it uh, just on the, the numbers. So go back and, and read up on that in the South Bend Lathe book if, if you have not done so. Since the compound is set over like this rather than the usual 29 or 30 degrees we're going to be doing plunge cutting. That is the threading tool will be plunged straight into the work rather than being fed at that 29 degree angle. So the tool is going to cut on both sides rather than just the one side that you typically cut on uh, by the other method. Now you can, st there are, is another method for doing this also with the, with the compound uh, set at 29 degrees, but I'm going to concentrate on the method that I'm using. There are several different ways to approach this and uh, Again, I'm only going to do the one. Some time ago, I mounted a dial indicator on the end of my cross slide. 
and I'm going to take all of my readings off of that. I do not have a digital readout. Some of you might have that, but can you see it turning as I move the, the cross slide in? Now, if you don't have one of those, and you probably don't, just go ahead and use your regular uh, graduated collar. But I prefer this for accuracy. This is the view from overhead. There's the tool and the work. And way in the back is the indicator, which has quite a glare on it. But that's what I will be watching as far as uh, the depth into the work is concerned. Bring the compound in this way and make sure that it's set at zero. Now that will be important when we start the second thread, uh, especially if you're not going to use a dial indicator. I have way more quill exposed here than I normally uh, would. The work uh, has an undercut in it. I put a little bit of red layout dye on there so that you can see the, the cut. And the initial cut will look like a very coarse thread with a great distance between uh, the points.